great entertainment for yourself. Look at you. This evening. Welcome to Training SA on this glorious evening right here on SABC3. Although, it's a bit cold today today, so Mambele, what did you do? Uh, Elma, you messed with the weather again. Elma, I don't get how you're the Ooh. only white person in South Africa that complains when it's cold. Refila is the only black person oh. that complains when it's hot. <laughs> I am living in hell. I don't know this parallel universe that I'm living on in the show. What in the racial profiling are you no, talking about? Guys. I please, am offended, my Please stick okay. to your racial profiles. <laughs> please. And also, can we just have a moment? Mm -hmm. For Rufilwe, who is five to flying today here. Very oh, sweetheart. <laughs> like flying. I've love, just started up. She looks like Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> I love it. You're, just, you're a glammed up Piccolo. I am the captain <laughs> of this enterprise, okay? So put some respect on my name. Oh, you, Elba, okay, specifically. Okay, Piccolo and Mable. <laughs> anyway, on that note, time to get into your pew pew top train. <laughs> All right, these brands. All right, so today, South Africa welcomes a very, very special somebody mm -hmm. into the hall of uh, Moomishness. <laughs> huh? Moomishness. Moomish. 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 Yeah? Yeah. Yes. Um, and I'll tell you why. There is a certain gentleman um, who has... Um, <laughs> There's a certain gentleman who has since deleted his Twitter account, mm. um, but he did something special this afternoon when he went to a Brumgee's post mm -hmm. about a totaled luxury car. I saw the and post. And he commented. <laughs> yes, you saw it, the right? luxury car that was the luxury so car glorious. that was yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. So he tweeted thusly: um, A Brumgee says alleged drunk driver crashed into a police vehicle in uh, Honeydew, Johannesburg. And Abramji says one cop was trapped and had to be freed. Mm -hmm. Right. A friend of ours, Sizwe, then responds to the tweet in this way. He says, actually, depending on the cover you took, at Outsurance, he takes them. <laughs> covers, covers drunk driving. Oh. Homeboy, homeboy has the guts mm. to talk to what mm. another insurance company will actually mm. do. <laughs> very, very interesting stuff. Then our insurance goes, hello, sees where this would be most irresponsible of us. If we could prove the incident driver had an accident while being over the limit, we will reject the claim. Sees where goes and goes extra and says, well, MFX <laughs> is insured by you and all we do is pay an additional excess fee of 4,000 Rand for such claims and then that very urge emoji that he also uses. But my best is the person who runs the insurance account who then comes back because mm -hmm. they could have just gone and then they just get tackled moaning. this. Mm -mm. But they, they back there on Twitter saying, thank you, we have now traced the claim. Where? Guess, what, what, guys, this is the definition of dry snitching. <laughs> Uninvited, unprovoked, you snitch on yourself. Because you know there's a song uh. that says, I'll do anything for clout. I'll do anything <laughs> for clout. And that's exactly what happened there. Not everything that you think needs to end up in your timeline because yeah. you'll end up scoring on my own goals. Look. Yeah, and sees where now you have cost people their jobs. If not your job, then I'm sure someone else there is out. <laughs> mm. um, I, it's a special one. It mm. is so sad. Mm -hmm. Sizwe, wherever you are, I hope you've got an entrepreneurial bro bone in your body. <laughs> because at this point, we liability and people are just like, we okay. can't trust this guy as an employee with our secrets. Brands <laughs> or brands? Oh, brands, brands. brands. Mumish or mumish? Mm. Here we go. La 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 Nick. Oh. Now, this is a story. Okay. So BMW takes out an ad, mm -hmm. right? And we see the ad... And I mean, I was initially, I, I was very happy. Ne? Okay. Until we just look, you know, give on a timeline, uh -huh. Questa is trending. Okay. I'm just like, he's dropped a new song Surely. or something nice yeah. is happening. Mm. Gandhi, mm. this happened. Now, Questa goes, do the right thing, right? It took so much effort for so many people to get the rights to sample that song. Mm. We did the right thing because we understood the value of the art. The ad, uh, uh, the ad cheapens all the efforts. Do the right thing for the Khrutmans at BMW SA. Yeah. So basically, what happened was, if you look at the ad, 
No? The, the ad from BMW, and you look at Questa's video. Mm. What you are seeing right there is that some scenes. Look, at, video, look at that. His video look, spirit. Look at that. Look at yeah. that. Look. But that's same like scene. shot by shot. All of it is the same. <laughs> Guys. Guys. The grading, <laughs> the old people references, the same points in which someone is staring off into the distance, mm -hmm. into the sunset. Yeah. It, it rings too familiar. And we, we discussed something similar. Last, Last week, week, Joe John Maloney Bieger. as well as John Boyega. Yeah. Uh, okay. Mm. So, you know, we wanted to speak to Debo. Debo Kamalope, who Debo is Kamalope, the director, the director, of director Spirit, yes. uh, um, We wanted video. to speak to him and we've got him on the line because we're trending okay. essay. Debo Kosaubon. Yes, we, we can. can loud How are you doing, my brother? It's so crazy. It feels like even though we're in level one, we're still talking over the phone and like <laughs> stuff and this and that. It's so crazy. I'm good. How are you guys? We are good. And we're always happy to speak to an award-winning director <laughs> who's behind hits like Queen Sono. Mm -hmm. And you've done amazing hey, work. Hey, hey, you know? hey, yes. Mouth, mouth, mouth the award. Yeah, bro. <laughs> 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 okay, so now um, we just want to know, we see brands do this, um, are you angrier at BMW? Like, who's at fault here? Because obviously people are coming for the brand, but you and I both know how this industry works, and there are probably a few people involved in this process. Yeah, so there's two layers to this conversation, mm. right? So the first layer, which is kind of the positive thing, which is like we, for many years, have been telling brands that, Black stories, black township stories are valuable, you know? Yeah. And when they haven't been listening to us, each time we walk into boardrooms and pitch ideas to brands and to films and to channels, we say, mm -hmm. yo, black stories matter. And they've never listened to us. So the one upside is that a BMW, which is a global brand, mm -hmm. has for the first time ever acknowledged that the story of the kid in the township mm -hmm. matters or the hot man in the township matters. So that's a big win. Mm. And we should firstly seek for that, right? We cool. should go, if a brand like BMW goes, these stories matter and we're going to use it as part of our general campaign, it's a good thing. It's a win. So let's start there, right? So we've been trying to convince them that the black stories in the township are women and suddenly they're acknowledging it. So that's a good win. The second layer to it is, though, is to go, okay, then in the execution of telling those stories, then what are you doing that we feel is not aligned to the, the people that are telling you mm. that the stories are winning? This is where I have a little bit of sort of contention, sure. right? Mm. To go myself and Senzo and the team at large, like Nota, like Leroy, like Lou at Rap Life, we came together and we thought, man, we've got something that's going to be a winner here. Mm. At the music level, those guys spend hundreds and thousands of rands to play music with the brand of Fasia stage with Spirit Chasers and those guys. And this is a small black record label, Red Life, right? They did that because they thought we've got something for the culture. And not only that, they thought we're going to do a piece of work and add visuals to it that's going to bring it to life. And they came to me and I spent about a quarter of a million rands on the music video to bring it to life, right? And this is me, I'm a young kid from Jabalu that felt strongly about what this song represented and what the visuals could be. And then when you bring that all together and you think these are young black kids that have spent hours and their own personal money to bring this vision to life, and then a big corporate company comes into play and says, we want to just right. take that and make yeah. it sound alike or look alike and then run with it without actually talking to the people that play the part so, in so, connecting the culture to this thing. That's where the challenge is. And, and that's Mr. where I, I'm challenged. I, I'm challenged. And this is where I feel a little bit uneasy about the execution of the commercial. Mm. So, Mr. Malopo, now, we're going to be tracking yes. the story and seeing how you take it mm. forward, right? Mm. And how you interact mm. with this big brand that has done this. We really appreciate your inputs and your insights tonight. And, of course, the diplomacy you brought to the situation. Mm -hmm. uh, and for you at home, stay with us. Stay with Ta on 3. We're going to be tracking more of those trends. Stay with us after the break.
Welcome back to Trading SA. I'm still here with my soul sisters. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Isn't it? Mm. Amandala. <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's been a challenging year for the Department of Education. Uh, first, it was the burning of 22 schools in just Gauteng alone. Then COVID forced the school calendar to be suspended. And if that was not bad enough, uh, the unions called for the school year to be completely scrapped. Mm. But that's not all. At the 82 million rand spent on a school that was built on um, some land. And then... Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, Gauteng MEC Banyaza Lisufi joins us via Zoom. Sure. I think it's befitting. Welcome, MEC, to Training SA. Thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity. This is my second time on this show. So uh, I'm thrilled. I'm excited. Yeah, it's now we're back. We're back with full force. <laughs> this is a different show. Um, yeah. No, 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 no. So, MEC, out of all the things that I mentioned. Level one. Level one. <laughs> <laughs> MEC, out of all the things that I mentioned. Which one was the toughest that you had to deal with? I think the return of learners to classrooms. Um, you, you will recall that we asked grade 12 and grade 7 mm -hmm. to come back uh, at the peak of the virus. Uh, mm -hmm. It didn't sound good. It was as if we were ruthless, heartless, mm -hmm. and it was as if we were not caring for learners. Uh, but we knew, uh, based on science, uh, that children were not at that risk. There was a risk, but the risk was not as high as when they are at home. So when we took that decision, I think majority of parents felt uh, this one's uh, uh, mm. are, are really not fine. They were, we, we were problems. But we, we, we had science that backed us, and I'm, 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 I'm pleased now that all the grades are back. Even when we allowed the grade R's to come back, the parents there protested. Uh, I know even now um, the attendance rate in terms of grade R is so low uh, that uh, we just have to wait for level zero, if there is level zero. Mm -hmm. uh, but overall, I think the decision to bring back those learners during that peak period uh, was, was the most difficult one. Because at that time, we didn't know how to manage the virus. It was for the first time that we have to keep the mask. It was for the first time that they needed to sanitize social distancing and all other related matters. Uh, but the latest problem of a school that was built on the wetland as well, it's something that worried me. That's amateurish, disappointing, and completely unacceptable. Yeah. Uh, but I can assure you, um, that school is going to be ready to come the 1st of January next year. So 1st of January next year, you say that school will now finally be safe to occupy and use for the learners in that area. What can we expect in terms of accountability? Well, I've already uh, whipped some few officials, uh, seriously so, because uh, this is completely, completely unacceptable. Uh, indeed, they've got the reasons, uh, and the reasons are simple. Normally, before you build a school, you've got your tags, you've got people that go through all the relevant uh, things underground. But with this one, the plans of the municipality didn't have the sewer system. So mm -hmm. they didn't pick up the sewer system. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, by yesterday, uh, already the municipality was fixing, was fixing that part because there's a problem of the municipality. It's not a problem of the provincial government. Okay. Uh, already they've started their own site, and that's the reason why I'm quite convinced come January, the opening of schools, that school will be operational. Sorry. They're fixing the problem. I've whipped those uh, officials that need to be whipped. It's completely unacceptable. It's a me challenge. It's always embarrassing to come. And it is MEC, but very quickly to that point, who is working on that project in collaboration with whom? Is it a public works uh, as well as a Department of Education um, joint venture, as it were? We give uh, the Department of uh, Public Works money as a department for them to build schools on our behalf. So it's their project. But we can't fold our arms when our money has been misused. Mm -hmm. We need to protect it. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why we intervened and that's the reason why we've acted against those officials. But regardless of anything, I can assure South Africans uh, that school will be open come January. Yeah. Now, MEC, you also pointed out the issue of convincing parents that, yes, it seemed callous to ask for kids to go back to school at certain grades, but you had reasons, right? I want to find out from you. Uh, Matrix are writing their prelims. Straight after that, they go into writing their finals, which happened in October. I mean, the pressure is on. From the very unenviable task that you've had, I'm no. keen to find out how you salvaged the academic year. 
the field of, what is very important is that the metric of 2020 must be exactly the same metric paper as the metric of 2013 207. Mm. It will be an embarrassment if matriculants of 2020 will be told you pass metric because the paper was simple because of COVID. And that's what we need to protect. Before we can protect the academic year, mm. we need to protect the integrity of the examination. Because this paper was set up 18 months ago, because we said the question papers 18 months ahead, we said the question paper is not going to change. Learners must write the metric as if nothing happened. We just have to do the catch up. We have to do the hard work. So I can tell you, I don't know the exam paper, but if there is a question about COVID, I always tell learners they must walk out because 18 months ago there was no COVID. So there's no way that there must be a question paper, a question about COVID. So we need to protect that part first. And I can assure you we've done that. The second part that we need to protect is an area that we've raised of the academic year. Remember, what we have lost now, we can only remedy it in three years' time. So mm -hmm. we've lost three years of academic year. Mm -hmm. So we're only going to be back to the real academic year in three years' time, which simply means around 2023. That's the only time. So the grade 11s, the grade 10s, and the grade 9s, we have to work extra hard to ensure that they catch up, they, they do the necessary catch up because we've trimmed the curriculum, which simply means we said, let's remove the nice things to have and remain with the core okay. of okay. what needs to be taught okay. in that particular grade. All and right. that's the reason why it will take us three years uh, okay. to level the entire curriculum okay. from the effects of, of COVID. All right, uh, MEC, I see that you, you you know you guys are talking about education, but I want to move to a serious matter. And here at, uh, at hmm. Trending SA, we're not afraid to ask the hard questions. Yes. And here's my, here's my hard question for you. Uh, MEC, you saw all the teams that were on the PSL log. You saw all of them. <laughs> ne? You looked at all of them. Then you made a decision to go for the one team that all the supporters are dead. All of them, they, all of them, they died. All the supporters of the team died. And then you, MEC, you chose, you made a decision. This is my team, a team that's only supported by the people that own it and the people that play for it. And I want to ask you right now, this is the hard question. What is your official excuse for supporting Moroka Swallows? You know, I when I laugh, I laugh. I'm one person, <laughs> and which is unfortunate, and that is why I fight. I fight with my uh, with my current uh, wife. Mm. I, I mean, I, all my girlfriends, including the one that I started with uh, many years ago, I still have their numbers. Oh, uh, because, oh, oh, MEC. oh honestly, what a mess! I, I don't abandon. I, when I laugh, I laugh. It's genuine laugh, and the reason why I chose this team. It's purely because of genuine love. Uh, I can get hurt. I can be disappointed. This team can be relegated. This team can be supported by old people. But this team was introduced to me in 1983, and I fell in love with it, and I'm still here because that's my weakness. When I love something, I love, and I love it dear. Mm. And uh, that's the reason right. why I'm here. And, and, I, and I don't know how to fight. And MC. There's, no There's no living person dead or alive, who can say you fought with me? Mm. I don't even have to fold farm uh, 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 fists uh, because I don't like fighting. I don't like violence. And this team is the most peaceful team that uh, and, I, and, I, I, I support. Let me say another hard question. Mm. We've gone yes. through a horrible year. I don't accept that answer by Swallows, but we'll take it. <laughs> uh, we've gone through a very horrible year. And there yeah. you are on Twitter, MEC. Oh, MEC. You are saying <laughs> you want an alcohol-free South Africa. You want to take away bevs from us during December. Why, MEC? Why? Let me tell you, alcohol is a waste of money. It's a waste of time. You can be happy without drinking alcohol. Alcohol is cost. Go to the graveside and see how many people that have died mm. because of alcohol. It's accidents, it's violence, mm. it's many things. Okay. If if we, we have to protect alcohol, I can tell you, we are missing a point. What we need to protect is M happiness. And I can MEC, tell you... How do you, you, you how do you December, how MEC? Do you do how Christmas? do you December without the bevs? <laughs> Let me tell you, you can't... 
I mean, you can do anything with her. I'm always happy. I don't drink. So, oh, uh, always happy. Uh, that's why. <laughs> there you go. See, thank you, MC. <laughs> thank you, MC. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Let me tell you, if there's something that is meaningless, useless, heartless, and must be thrown away, is alcohol. And I'm very firm on that one. Because if you can have an alcohol-free South Africa, I can assure you, the number of accidents, the number of fights, the number of gender violence, mm. and the number of death will go down. Just imagine how many people are in hospital now. And just imagine how many people are in prison mm. purely because they did something wrong because of alcohol. So don't elect, me as a pre don't elect me as a president of this country. <laughs> because if you can make that mistake... You this is why I don't like swallows. This, uh, is, why, this is why I don't like swallows. In the name of discipline and uh, accountability and keeping things together, thank you so much for your time this evening. We really, really appreciate it. Good luck with the rest of your efforts. We appreciate your time. So Choose much. another team, MEC. Uh, and to you at team. home, after the break, we look at stories from around the world that uh, just make us go, what? Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Training SA on SAPC3, the only show that still speaks to Morocco Swallows supporters. <laughs> <laughs> Before we roll so credits, <laughs> here's some shock and laughter from around the world in 60 seconds. An extra, extra, we all are life, joy, flavor, penny, extra, extra. All right, mm. I like that. Is extra, that your voice? Extra, Is that your extra. Voice? Right, <laughs> the good. first one. Let's get into it. What is this? 1.5 million COVID masks made of gold yeah, and diamonds yeah. is a work of art. No, guys. No, guys. Das hunger mensen in die wereld. We have better things we can spend our money on. No one, no one needs to have a gold and diamond. That's not real, is it? I want it. It looks real. Uh -uh. I want it. Uh -uh. Okay, want next it. up, let's see what else is happening in the world. I'm sure we can top that weirdness. Because, <laughs> you know, because, there's yeah. so many billions of us. Qantas, seven hour flight to nowhere sells out in 10 minutes. No way. <laughs> Wait. Okay, no, no, no. I believe that. I believe that. If people, I'm not sure which uh, Asian country it was, if people were buying tickets just to get on a plane, just to feel like they might possibly be able to Nia go Yala. somewhere, I can believe that a seven hour I, flight sold out. Do you know what I believe? In Marvel, there's a place called Nowhere. Maybe it's yeah. us Marvel supporters buying this and but, going... But then you're okay. all a biggie dome, man. <laughs> then you must spend your money, go waste it there. Ooh, that's cold. Although that is very logical. Yeah, I like that. Nowhere. Mm. All right, the next one goes a little something like this. The world is really going through the most, I think. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think we have hit peak insane. This is just bonkers. How selling your use... Sis. Underwear. Sis. Uh, and turn all clippings online. Mm -hmm can make you a millionaire. Do we walk among these people uh. that buy toenail clippings? <laughs> I, I guess we haven't asked the very important question of what the underwear is used for. Sis, Maybe guys. they're creating... Oh, I don't know. Sis. I no, can't even no, no, All right, move, move it <laughs> Joe Biden, move it along. text okay, the cup for me. All right. All right. Oh, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Okay. I will never speak to you again. You'll never see me again. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Emma Blair, and I approve that message. You well, are happy I, with that message. I will never, I don't ever, 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 ever want to see that man again. But that American politics is a joke. Is that what you're, what I you've just, approved? I just don't want to see, whatever, how the joke pans out, I just don't want to see that man ever, ever again. I feel like if this was a TV show, I would skip to see two seasons on because I can't <laughs> with what's happening now. Cosign. That's where Absolutely I am. <laughs> so anyway, thank you for joining us. Fresh from the New York Fashion Woo! Week, we are joined Woo! by Matkosa. And we are also catching up with Professor Shabir Madi because COVID is still here, Owens. Mm -hmm. it Just because here, it's guys. level one doesn't yep. mean COVID has left. Mask, those keep masks. safe. Stay social safe, distancing. wear your mask, social distance, mm -hmm. wash your hands, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Oh, I don't know that.